So this week on Crystal Kyle and Friends, we had Vosh on the podcast, and um, the response was interesting. Everybody knows that I try my best to avoid uh, reading reactions because it's so easy to go insane when you know that it's impossible to please everybody because two people could watch the same thing and have polar opposite reactions. So, you know, it's best to just do whatever you think is best and see where the chips fall. But I wanted to uh, dive into this conversation, which I think is an important conversation, which is some of the criticism that we got over this podcast. Now, again, plenty of people didn't criticize it. They thought it was wonderful. They thought it was lovely. And, um, but there were also plenty who did criticize it. Now, the, of course, the main critique is, how dare you platform him? Now, there's a lot of reasons that they give why they think he shouldn't be platformed. And I will say that most of the points that were made from people who were making that argument, I think were beyond absurd. I think they were obvious smears. I think they are, you know, they're little five second clips that are completely taken out of context. Um, and so I think that a lot of people who were making the argument were just coming from a place of like, I don't like this person and I'm working backwards from that conclusion. Um, and so... How dare you do X, Y, and Z that I don't want you to do? So, um, let's get into a, a little bit behind the thought process of why um, I wanted him on. I mean, the reason I wanted him on was very simple. I found his commentary interesting. I even found his critiques interesting. And I think he's an honest person. And when you have a dialogue with an honest person, it's a lot easier to come to um, a mutual understanding. So, on that alone, I felt it was worthy of having a conversation with Vosh. And um, listen, I think the podcast went well. He thinks the podcast went well. He talked about it after the fact. Um, now, when people bring up that criticism, the criticism of how dare you platform X, Y, or Z, my old response to it used to be, don't, like, just shut up because I'll talk to anybody. That was basically my reaction. Like, who are you to micromanage my decisions? I'm going to talk to anybody. Now, upon reflecting on that, I realized that's not exactly true. Because I don't really want to talk to somebody who, for example, is pro-genocide. So it's not that I'll talk to anybody. To be clear, of course, Vosh is not pro-genocide. That, <laughs> that would be ridiculous. Um... I'm just trying to explain to you guys my thought process and, and where I'm at now on this issue of platforming somebody. So, I realized my position is not that I'll talk to anybody. Um, now, if others say, hey, I'll talk to anybody, I would say, that's totally fine. That's their decision. They could talk to whoever they want, even somebody who is pro-genocide. But I'll say this, you need to make sure you ask the right questions. If you talk to somebody who has some hideous, odious, terrible views, and you don't push them on the things that are hideous, odious, terrible views, well, then I do have an issue with it myself. And I'll say it's, it's irresponsible to platform person X, Y, or Z if you're not pushing back on these certain beliefs that they have where you need to push back on it. So I personally wouldn't talk to anybody. I do have lines. I do have standards. But... I would defend somebody who talks to literally anybody as long as they're asking the right questions. So that gets into, um, you know, the broader topic of what's the criteria to talk to somebody for me. And for me, again, it's very simple. All I need to see is that they're intellectually honest. So as long as in my estimation, they're intellectually honest and I find them interesting, then I want to talk to them. Now, that's where we get, you know, that's where everybody gets sort of stuck, I think, because somebody who I might think is intellectually honest, you might not think is intellectually honest. Somebody who I might think is interesting, you might not think is interesting. And to that, I respond, I don't give a fuck about your criticism, because it's Crystal's show and my show, and I'm going to make those judgment calls as best as I can. Now, again, you might totally disagree with my judgment call on that. Don't care. <laughs> Couldn't care in the, in the least. In the same way, if you have a show and you talk to somebody on your show who, in my estimation, isn't intellectually honest or interesting, 
Doesn't matter that I don't find them intellectually honest or interesting. It's not my show, it's your show, and you do find them intellectually honest or interesting. So you go right ahead and talk to them and ask, you know, whatever questions you want to ask. Now again, I will criticize if I think you have somebody on who needs to be pushed on certain things and you don't push them on certain things. But to come full circle to the conversation with Vosh, if you think we didn't ask the questions that, that we should have asked, you're just wrong. Because we talked about his story, how he came up, what I found interesting on that front. But then we also got to almost every single area where we disagreed. We had a handful that we didn't get to, but those were more ancillary issues. So in other words, we talked about the issue of Bernie or Bust, where we have some disagreement. We talked about the issue of the populist right, where we have some disagreement. We talked about the issue of force the vote. So I have somebody on who I think is honest and who I think is interesting, and we talk about where we agree and where we disagree. So I guess the argument that I would make to people who would criticize Crystal and I having Vosh on is very simple. Um, do yourself a favor and actually listen to the thing you're criticizing before you criticize it. Now, if you listen to it and you still want to criticize me, okay, go right ahead. But suffice to say, I don't think it's reasonable criticism. Because he meets the criteria. He meets the standards. I think he's honest and I think he's interesting. So on that alone, I was willing to have him on, willing to talk to him, willing to hear him out. And add on to that the fact that I think we did an incredibly responsible interview in, in the sense that we talked about everything where I felt compelled like we had to talk about it. We talked about the areas where we disagree and fleshed it out. So... I think that any reasonable person who watches the interview is going to walk away saying, well, that was fascinating. They talked about the areas where they agree. They talked about the areas where they disagree. They tried to come to some sort of mutual understanding. And beyond that, I think you're out of your mind if you think the left is ever going to win anything ever if two people or three people who agree as much as me, Vosh, and Crystal can't get along. I need you to stop and really reflect on that point for a second. Myself... Crystal Ball and Vosh, if you sit down and write out in a very bullet point fashion our beliefs on the, on the various policy issues, how much is there agreement between us? 90%? 95%? If you think it's possible for the left to ever win anything without people who agree as much as we do getting along, I think you're an insane person. And so, unfortunately, what's happened a lot on um, the online left is that everybody's become a petty fucking reality star with, with, you know, the most snowflake feelings ever, and, like, anybody criticizes somebody, and they go nuclear ASAP. Everybody goes nuclear, everybody goes hyperbolic, everybody goes over the top, the person they're criticizing is the worst person in the world by far and away. It is the most childish shit I've ever seen. And almost everybody's guilty of it. So... There's no way you're ever going to build, a, you know, a left-wing project or have left-wing unity or have left-wing victories if you can't get people who nominally agree as much as us three agree to sit down and have a conversation and iron things out. Now, listen, at the end of the day, are there still areas where we disagree? Sure. That doesn't matter. Who cares? <laughs> like, you have the conversation, you talk it out, you act like adults, you don't act like petty reality stars with fragile egos, and at the end of the day, everybody's better off for it. And then, you know, the final point I'll make is... If you don't want to watch it, don't watch it. Like, is that, like, instead of sitting there doing your little bullshit criticism, just don't watch it if you don't want to watch it. Oh, this is not for me, because I hate that person. I hate Kyle, or I hate Vosh, or I hate Crystal, or whatever. Okay, nobody's fucking is holding you captive and telling you to watch it. Don't fucking watch it. I can't imagine where somebody's at mentally to, like, sit there and type out angry messages over something. I don't like the person in this, so I'm going to say that they're this, 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 and this, and this. Nobody fucking cares. Nobody cares. You don't like it. Don't watch it. That's that's the end of it. And also, it is hilariously ironic. I really do think that anybody who makes the criticism that you can't talk to person X, Y, or Z, don't turn around and then pretend like you're pro-free speech or you're in favor of open discourse. Again, it's fine to be specific in criticisms. If somebody talks to somebody who's pro-genocide and they don't push them on the pro-genocide position, I'm going to criticize the fuck out of them and be like, that's irresponsible. But you can't say the conversation I had with Vosh is irresponsible. When we ironed out all the areas where we disagree, we had those conversations. We went into every nook and cranny of, you know, of, of nuanced discourse on the areas where we have nominal disagreement. So you can say it's irresponsible. So don't pretend like you're in favor of free speech and you're in favor of open discourse and dialogue. If you look at a conversation with Crystal, Kyle, and Vosh, and you think like, 
that sh conversation shouldn't have existed. It shouldn't have happened. So, and, and I want to be clear about something. I'm getting ahead of this stuff right now. There are going to be plenty of you who don't like a lot of the guests who are coming up on Crystal Kyle and Friends. Save it. I don't give a fuck if you don't like them. I don't care. Because again, my criteria is this. Do I think they're honest? Do I think they're interesting? If it's yes and yes to those two things, I'm having them on. That's it. That's the end of it. That's it. You might disagree. Doesn't matter. My judgment is the opposite. Okay, so I don't want to hear it. There's going to come a time where we have Jimmy Dore on. A lot of people fucking hate that guy. A lot of people fucking love that guy, but a lot of people fucking hate that guy. Save your shitty fucking criticism. Do yourself a favor and either don't watch it, or if you do watch it, I think you'll walk away saying that was a good interview. Am I going to talk to him the areas where we agree? Sure. Am I also going to talk about where Jimmy and I disagree? You bet your ass I am. There's nothing that we've done to this point which should lead you to believe I'm not going to be an open book in every conversation. And same with Crystal. So we're going to... Look at what we did with Andrew Yang. We held him accountable on the issue of Israel, Palestine, and BDS. What makes you think I'm not going to ask important questions that need to be asked to whoever I have on the podcast? Of course I'm going to do that. So I want you to understand something. Some of you are going to be upset with a lot of the guests upcoming. I don't care. Probably going to talk to Jimmy Dore. Probably going to talk to Cenk Uger. I know. Everybody's, you know... Everybody in, in, in the lefty space is, is now... And I'm talking also about the audience. Everybody has a fragile ego and nobody wants to talk to anybody else and everybody wants to launch smears and vicious attacks and character attacks and attack motivations and all that stuff. Again, if you can't even have a conversation with those who you have an issue with when nominally you agree on 80 or 90% or 95% of stuff, I think that's the most childish thing in the world. So there's going to be plenty of people who you guys have criticisms of that we're talking to. I don't know what to tell you other than if it really hurts your feelings that much and you hate it that much, then don't watch it. But anybody who does give it a chance and does watch it, even if they're iffy on the idea of having the person on in the first place, I think they'll walk away going, you know what? That was good because the questions that needed to be asked were asked. So I just wanted to go ahead and get this out there and talk about this issue of platforming you know, get, criticizing somebody for platforming them. By the way, another criticism might be, you don't have enough or any right-wingers on. So what's up with that? The, my, again, my criteria is I have to think you're honest and I have to think you're interesting. There's just not that many on the right who I find honest and or interesting. Um, you know, I could see myself talking to like a Rand Paul type person, um, or excuse me, not Rand, Ron Paul type person. I think he's honest and interesting, even though I massively disagree with him on like 50% of stuff. Everything when it comes to the economy, I disagree with him on. It's possible I could see myself talking to somebody like that. Um, it's possible I could see myself talking to some other person on the right who I think is honest or interesting, as few as there are. Like, Sagar is another example. Stay tuned, by the way, because we have a little surprise for you tomorrow morning that you might want to see. Um, so, yeah... I don't have, there are no hard, fast rules other than this basic idea that for Crystal and myself, if we find you, if we think you're honest and if we think you're interesting, we'll have you on the podcast. Um, so that's my criteria. You know, it's not the idea that I will literally talk to anybody because I won't. There are plenty of people who I just don't think are honest or don't think are interesting. So they're not coming on the podcast. But I guarantee you, when I do have people on who I find honest and or interesting, I will dive into the areas where we agree and where we disagree. And then you guys can determine whether or not you like it from then on out. But um, yeah, I found a lot, of the, a lot of the rhetoric around this interview was really fucking pathetic. Not going to lie. The criticisms, I mean. Because you could tell that almost everybody who was criticizing on, from the platforming angle didn't even watch it. Didn't even watch it. Because if they did, they would have said, oh, okay, well, they had an open discourse, not only on how, how they agreed, but then also they got into how they disagreed. And so aired it out for everybody to see. And then also, I just think it's a good thing when, when you do have a nominal ally who you agree with between 80 and 95% who you at least can talk to. 
because it's hilarious when anybody thinks that you'll be anything other than an irrelevant subculture if you have nothing but cruise missiles to launch at the faces of people who you agree with that much. I mean, it's just, I mean, this is obvious. This is politics 101 stuff, you know? And um, it's funny what's happened to, to the online left, how everybody's just so at each other's throats all the time. The only time you've seen unity recently is probably when Andrew Yang was defending the Israeli war crimes and the entire left all got on the same page. Last time we had unity before that was the Bernie Sanders campaign, you know? So, um, it, it's good to get back to a place where you can have that kind of unity while also not abandoning your principles and being honest with each other 100% of the time. And that's really part of the goal of what we're doing. So, anyway, that's what I have to say about the platforming criticism. I really think it's a bullshit criticism. I do. I really think it's a bullshit criticism. I think if you believe in free speech, if you believe in open discourse, then really the only time you should criticize somebody for platforming somebody is if they have on somebody who doesn't get pushed on important topics where they need to be pushed. And obviously I think that everybody we have on, if there's an area that merits pushing them hard on a topic, we push them hard on that topic. There's an area where it means fleshing out a disagreement. We flesh out that disagreement. So, it is what it is. Um, I guess criticize away if you want to criticize away, but there's an easy solution if you're really that offended by it. Don't watch it. But if you do watch it, my guess is 99% of you will walk away going, that was good. And that, was, that hit everything that I wanted it to hit. So, anyway, um, that's what I have to say about that. And... People should have better th stuff to do with their time than <laughs> policing who other people decide to have dialogue with.